Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution show, electric buses. Alright, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host, as you know. And today's an exciting episode where I'm able to uh, finally bring you uh, folks uh, some really good news regarding electric vi transit. Now, you know I've been talking about that for quite a long time, but here I'm actually going to get to experience it uh, in a town that I live very, very close to, the city of Brampton here in Brampton, Ontario, Canada. And I'm honored to be joined by Alex uh, Milojevic. How are you, Alex? Good, good to meet thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much thank for you. taking the time to chat with me. He's one of the general managers here at Brampton Transit. And we're going to talk about and show you folks today some of the things about electrifying transit that you may not know you know obviously there's there's the green the clean side to emissions and things like that but we're going to dig a little bit more impress these guys on why they're doing what they're doing what are some of the benefits they're seeing and how some of those experiences are being translated into the ridership so it's a very exciting time so again thanks Alex for taking the time my to pleasure. chat with me chat with me now my first question is really you know obviously climate change and a lot of governments have adopted target policies and, and roadmaps to lowering greenhouse gas and carbon footprints on a wide scale but what's really been the driving force b behind the city of Brampton because you guys have been POCing electrified busing for quite some time to me a little bit ahead of the curve what's that driving force well first of all Ken thank you for joining us here today with uh, you and the uh, EV evolution show yep. we're looking forward to uh, seeing some of your uh, work that you're doing thank and you. welcome to you know welcome to Brampton Transit thank we're you, happy yeah. to have you here today you know, the city and Brampton Transit are certainly one of the ones that are looking at a new innovation and how that innovation can migrate into our community, migrate into our business, and helping reduce the greenhouse uh, gas emissions within the city of Brampton, especially the carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Back in, uh, in 2019, our city right. council declared a climate emergency for the city, mm -hmm. and they set out targets. And one of the targets that our city council set out was a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by wow. 2050, wow. which is a fairly aggressive mm -hmm. reduction, but at mm -hmm. least it sets out the plan for the city on how we can achieve that and how we can get there. And again, with, uh, with the transit being a major contributor uh, to some of those um, targets, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely something that we're, we're very keen on in, in terms mm -hmm. of meeting those targets by 2050. And just a frame for, for my viewership, because I have viewers all over the world, <coughs> but a city of Brampton's a fair sized city. It's one of the top 10 cities in Canada. And from a population size, oh, it's gotta be getting close to 700,000 now. That's they right. can't update the, the signage fast enough because of the growth that we're experiencing. So we have a very, very large uh, community here in, in the city of Brampton and a very large transit fleet. Prior to you guys going electric, how big was that fleet at that time in 2019? Back in 2019, Ken, we were probably around 450 vehicles. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we're serving a community of, like you say, close to 700,000 people. And the unique thing about the city of Brampton is we have riders that choose to take transit. Yes. Uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic and uh, during the pandemic, a lot of the transit systems have had huge reductions in ridership, as of course as the city of Brampton has had, uh, where people were experiencing 20% ridership to 30% ridership. Mm -hmm. Within a greater Toronto and Hamilton area, all the systems in this area have achieved between 60 to 80%, very few have achieved 100%. In our right. community here in the city, we're at already at 115% pre-pandemic numbers. Wow. So okay. our city takes to public transit, and uh, one of the big components in reducing greenhouse gas emissions is the different type of methods that you use for the modal split, mm -hmm. i.e. cycling, walking, yes. uh, public transit. And that's something that we are, are definitely uh, shifting towards, and that helps reduce the greenhouse gas emissions as well. Absolutely. You know, we look back at, back in 2010 when we launched our Zoom service, mm -hmm. our bus rapid transit service. For those of you who know, uh, it's called Zoom. We actually planned out how do we start reducing our greenhouse gas emissions back then. Oh, wow, okay. We were the first in North America to use the new flyer industries Excelsior bus. That's a hybrid diesel right. electric bus. Mm -hmm. And by using those buses in our fleet for our Zoom service, it reduced approximately uh, 10 to 15% of fuel reduction. Wow. Okay. Each bus is probably around 25,000 tons uh, of CO2 per mm -hmm. bus per year savings. So we started that journey back in 2010, although a hybrid, we still have tailpipe yes. emissions back then. Yep. Uh, that led us into, in 2015, we started looking at how can we advance our electrification program? Mm -hmm. What do we look at technologies that are out there that we can achieve to continue that reduction? 
We engage in 2015 uh, QTRIC, which is a Canadian Urban Transit Research and Innovation Consortium, okay. to bring together uh, systems that can help reduce the greenhouse gases across Canada. One of the big things we did back then were to look at a pilot on how do we introduce uh, electric vehicles mm -hmm. and how can we make it all interoperable. We were very fortunate back in 2019 that the federal funding gave us Mm -hmm. monies to start a trial program and right. that bus trial program we were very proud of uh, we implemented in 2019 mm -hmm. we launched in 2021 as the launch itself uh, that compiled of um, six new flyer buses mm -hmm. okay. uh, two Nova buses they're all manufactured here in Canada one yes. in Winnipeg one in Quebec mm -hmm. uh, we also implemented chargers on-street chargers uh, from ABB mm -hmm. as well as Siemens mm -hmm. so this is the believe it or not the largest global deployment of interoperable buses we have countries around I the world that. that have 1,000, 2,000 yeah. electric buses. This Especially is in the Europe, only yeah. one mm -hmm. wow. and the largest in its kind that is interoperable. Wow. Okay. So we're getting the data from Qtric. Qtric is working with us and some of my colleagues will talk to you more about mm -hmm. uh, where we're going in the future and some mm -hmm. of the programs and, and what we're asking Qtric to do. But you know, we are very much um, the first that launch it uh, mm -hmm. with an interoperable system and it's proven to be extremely successful and we're having a lot of lessons learned and some teachings on how we advance that further. Exactly. Uh, last question for you, Alex. You know, electric buses certainly support uh, the city of Brampton's climate action plan. Uh, you mentioned some of the lowering of the of the GHGs and some of that those numbers. That, in combination of what else, is helping to support that plan? Absolutely. So we have the Community Energy and Emissions Reduction Plan called SERP in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, they set out targets for us. As, as again, uh, you can imagine that within the city itself, transportation is a big contributor to to emissions within the city. What we've done is. We're working with our SERP program as a city entity, as part of the city transportation and contribution to the emissions. We're probably around 70 to 80% of the contributors mm. to emissions okay. with our mm -hmm. vehicles. Yeah. So one of the big benefits is the more we can electrify our buses, the more reductions we can do. Huge contributor and we're looking at across the board through our city with different vehicles. Yep. How do we electrify our fleet and sure. where do we go from there? Yeah, but obviously, you know, public transit and buses are a big contributor, as you said. They're idling a lot, right? They're, they're constantly going, serving the public. So I'm sure the reduction that you've seen has been quite dramatic even in your POC so far. But Ken, this is a We're fantastic thing. I really appreciate you, you coming out here and, uh, and spending the time with us and sharing this with your EV Revolution show. I think that's a great way of getting this information out and thank I applaud you. you for all the work that you do. Well, thank you and thank you for having me out. And I'm going to keep picking some more smart minds here of some of your staff Perfect. and get more information. They're the smarter minds, by the way. All right. Ken, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Okay, yeah. thanks. All right, so now we're inside the bus. I'm here with Scott Gilner. How are you, Scott? I'm well. How are you, Ken? Good, good. Thank, uh, thanks for uh, having me on, and good to meet you as well. Now, what's your role again? Because it's a long title. So, actually, I'm leading the electrification portfolio for okay. Brampton Transit. Uh, my title is Manager of Innovation and Sustainability. Great. Um, but, yeah, I'm electrification uh, guru. So you it. live, breathe, uh, and talk, and walk electrification. Yeah, we've been uh, actively engaged in mm -hmm. planning our trial. Yeah. Um, personally, I've been involved since the end of 2014, so oh, it's okay. been a long time wow. Wow. Uh, that we've been okay. planning the trial and uh, efforts uh, to get electrified here. So we've got this cool blue mood lighting here to just uh, you know be different for you folks. Let's go right to uh, an important question that I get asked a lot about EVs in general mm -hmm. for consumers is winter driving and climates, right? Yeah. Cool climates. So, how, what have you seen for uh, that, uh, how these buses have handled the winters? Any challenges, uh, any benefits, uh, differentiators versus the, the, the normal diesel buses that you have? Yeah, so winter driving specifically, um, you know, obviously there's some benefits with the direct drive traction motor, mm -hmm. uh, the electric drive motor. So we are seeing increased traction control mm -hmm. uh, in the winter time. Um, one thing that we have to tackle here in Canada, obviously, is our cold climate. Mm -hmm. um, so to help with that uh, in terms of the maintaining uh, an appropriate cabin temperature. Uh, we do have diesel fired auxiliary heaters on board okay. that yeah. come on when the temperature drops below minus five degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we're running all electric heat and uh, we've seen great success over the 19 months that we've been running the trial. Um, you know, we typically see batteries deplete about 30% mm -hmm. yep. of their full state of charge, even mm -hmm. with everything running uh, during the winter months. And we've seen a fairly insignificant drop in uh, consumption. Mm -hmm. So, you know, within, within about five kilowatt hours oh, okay. um, in terms of efficiency. So oh, all in all, it's very encouraging news for us and uh, certainly we're That's we're actually really good on the yeah. efficiency side. Yeah. Now, uh, all the buses that you're piloting right now are, are the non-according style. So there's just the, the regular, yes. uh, are they, I'm trying to remember, are they 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40 40
12 meter, uh, what uh, kind of battery packs or size battery packs are you running on these? So we're running two and we're running um, batteries that have been de designed to be opportunity charged. Okay. In other mm -hmm. words, they're charged on the route, mm -hmm. not so much long range in depot charge buses where you charge them for three to five hours at sure. a lower rate and then, go. and then go as much as you can and bring okay. the bus back, but yep. we, we're actually opportunity charging on route um, using 450 kilowatt hour um, chargers okay. mm -hmm. and so they're um, you know, pantograph style chargers that make contact with the roof they of the do. bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. They charge them in under 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So, very quick charge. Yeah. Um, and the new Flyer bus that we're sitting on today is a 213 kilowatt hour battery pack on okay. board, mm -hmm. um, which range wise gets you about 120 kilometers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the Nova buses that we have are about 76 kilowatt hours, okay. and they get you roughly around 25 kilometers. Okay. So, a big change there. And we yeah. did that purposely yeah. to see. Uh, the various um, effects on consumption mm -hmm. uh, for the different routes that we've chosen for the trial. Being able to tailor, you know, the buses to the, to the specific routes, why overpay for a larger bus, a larger battery when you're not going to run it on those, these kind of routes when you only need smaller. Uh, so how are they measuring up to the routes that you're putting them on? So it's a great question. Actually, we worked uh, quite extensively with Qtrick um, in doing some predictive modeling mm -hmm. and it was very, very technically detailed. Um, they actually took each route uh, within it. So we've done this for the full network now. Yeah. And uh, we did it as part of the trial for the two routes, but we've now expanded that and done the, the entire route network. Okay. So mm -hmm. we have a good idea in terms of uh, vertical horizontal alignment changes, Great. passenger loading. So we've actually predicted uh, the efficiency of each bus on each route. And uh, we're really encouraged with the results that we're seeing in the actual data that are mm -hmm. coming in. So mm -hmm. key performance indicators are energy efficiency mm -hmm. or energy consumption, which is kilowatt hours per kilometer. Yep. Uh, Qtrix range that they predicted the buses would operate was about 1.1 to about 1.8 kilowatt okay. hours per kilometer. Okay. We're actually seeing actual results around 1.4. And that's a blended, that's a blended uh, yearly rate like up, up overall 19 seasons? 19 month average. 19. Uh, wow, okay. Including the winter months. So that's it's very good. encouraging. That is. Yeah. And, um, Excellent. Um, and as you know, bus manufacturers uh, strive for greater capacities, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're only going to see that uh, efficiency improve. For sure. uh, vehicles are light weighted, yep. uh, more efficient, and, yep. and things will hopefully just get better from here. Yep. So I think in terms of total cost of ownership, return on mm -hmm. investment, that's the yep. big question. Yep. How much money are we actually going to save through mm -hmm. electrification? What are the key benefits? So, you know, net cost savings, including diesel savings, yep. electricity, you know, global adjustment, demand yep. charges, which make up your electricity bill. Yep. Uh, we took a look at that, and on average, we're expecting to save about forty to fifty thousand dollars per bus per year. Okay. Wow. Um, so in total, with the eight yep. buses, it's about mm -hmm. eight hundred thousand, and, and over the right. eighteen-year life of a bus, okay, was you're talking, yep. you know, close to seven million dollars, hopefully, in savings. Right. So now, how big of a gap price jump is it from a regular, you know, diesel-powered bus or or diesel hybrid to a fully electric? Is it like double the 2x the, the initial upfront cost? That's a great question mm -hmm. and uh, it's a timely question uh, just <laughs> yeah. given where we're at with, yeah. with uh, the economy today. Um, we are seeing some price increases over what we were expecting to pay. Okay. Um, typically it's about $500,000 or $500,000 more okay. for an electric bus than a traditional okay. diesel bus okay. but uh, that number is climbing. Yeah. Um, and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, hopefully they'll start coming down again as battery pack pricing Absolutely. comes down, and yeah. you know, we haven't hit that hundred kilowatt hour U.S. Uh, pack, you know, price yet. But we're getting there. Yeah. So that when I just think of the numbers, then you know the extra upfront costs, and I use this for my consumer uh, arguments as well and statements. Um, you know, it looks, it sounds like it's about what four to five years on that return uh, to see that ROI on the, the higher upfront uh, costs versus the savings, and then from there on the rest of the balance of that thirteen you know, 10 plus years of, of usage, you're on the, the positive side, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as part of that, we've done that ROI mm -hmm. uh, calculation and, um, you know, we are expecting those savings to, to come to fruition and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we'll be able exact, to pay back yeah. all, all the incremental yeah. cost. Yeah. yeah. No, excellent. Yeah. And on the ridership side, what kind of feedback, what are you seeing from your ridership? How are they responding to this? So the feedback we've gotten is they love the quietness of, yeah. of the e-buses. Yeah. Um, obviously it's, it's a different a, experience. It right? is a very different, it's almost an eerie <laughs> We're gonna experience. We're going to go for a quick drive too. Uh, so, it's, yeah. it's very quiet, yeah. um, unusually quiet actually mm -hmm. when you're used to sitting on a bus, but yeah. uh, passengers that you know have longer commutes really mm -hmm. appreciate that quietness. Oh, yeah. um, we've got USB chargers on, on the buses oh, now, okay. so you can plug your laptop in or whatever you want to yeah. work away. Okay. Um, and it's a much quieter, more enjoyable ride. Uh -huh. um, so um, passengers also enjoy the environmental benefits. So if they're environmentally sure. conscious, mm -hmm. they feel personally good that they're making a contribution to a, a more sustainable future. Excellent. Yeah. Great.
Well, thank you very much. That was uh, very helpful. Pleasure, and I know yeah. I got a lot of people who are smart engineers out there that love to hear that kind of data. So thanks, Absolutely. Scott. All right. My pleasure, Ken. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, so now I'm here with Navreet Chima. She's the Customer Experience Coordinator for Brampton Transit. How are you? Thank you very much for organizing all this and having me out. I appreciate it. Now, I understand you're the heart of the design of this bus, so I wanted to chat with you about that and on what kind of was your thinking and maybe ask you about some of the markings and what, what, what you know, they mean to you guys. For sure. So um, we were excited to feature special branding on uh, eight of our electric buses and the four chargers are part of this trial. Mm -hmm. um, and we really wanted the, the, the buses to stand out because it's it's a first of its kind trial. And we want to ensure that, you know, um, the community, um, uh, it, it brought awareness to the community and the residents in Absolutely. the area. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so when they see the bus driving by, they, they know what it is. Um, so uh, the design was actually done in-house. Um, okay. So we're really proud of it. Um, and the uh, thought process behind it was really bringing the electrification features onto uh, onto the design of the bus. Uh, so, for example, the color blue was chosen mm -hmm. um, because of uh, electric blue. So we really yeah. brought that feature in. Um, and then uh, the the background of the bus, you'll see kind of intricate lines mm -hmm. um, are featured. So that was for the, uh, for example, like a circuit um, to really show the movement of elec uh, electricity. Mm. Um, so that's why we chose those lines. And then we, we also wanted a symbol to really represent uh, electrification, something similar to like a lightning bolt. Mm. So our, our E here, um, okay. we call it the E, is um, for, for us to really uh, show our, our uh, you know, this is an electric bus and that's kind of our, our mace, a main symbol for mm -hmm. it as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've been uh, so happy with the feedback. Uh, the residents have loved seeing the bus in their neighborhoods, so we're, we're really excited about it. Well, you know, you, you guys have done a great job on the branding because I, as soon as I saw them and, you know, yes, I saw electric bus, but the blue just pops right out. And, you know, one of the routes that you're running are fairly close to where I live. So I see these all the time. Awesome. Again, as I said earlier, wish everybody the best of luck and you guys did a great job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to take a quick ride in the bus. I'm here with Heather McDonald, the manager of customer experience. Pleasure. I got that correct, Heather? You had that All correct. All right, so we're going to hold out for our dear life white Patrick, our great driver. Now he's going to go pretty slow. Um, but, you know, now that we're on the bus and, and riding, and, and Scott touched upon this a little bit, but, you know, uh, obviously there's a lot of benefits and, uh, and advantages for both the uh, operators, the staff, and then the ridership. Can you explain some of those, the, what they've seen by going electric here on of these buses? Of course. The feedback has been positive. Mm -hmm. Our operators, our maintenance workers, along with first responders, yeah. have approximately 10,000 hours of training wow, okay. to be prepared for the electric bus. So our operators enjoy riding or dri driving them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's smooth acceleration and braking, as yeah. you can tell. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Our maintenance team is seeing less wear and tear, which is positive. Mm -hmm. And our riders appreciate the smooth and quiet ride. Mm -hmm as you can hear. So obviously the operators are, are happy. Um, was there kind of a, was it just the sense that, oh, man, this is just much easier than the other buses. They're quiet and they're comfortable. 100%. Was that kind of what you heard? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And even the residents in the neighborhood where the two yeah. routes are running, yeah. they find that is very quiet. Yes. So a positive experience overall. Absolutely. And you know, with the ridership, Scott mentioned a little bit about the ridership when they're on the bus, you know, it's a quiet, comfortable, yeah, you can certainly, I, I'm going to get tired, you know, here, I'm going to fall asleep and have a nap here <laughs> because it's such a comfortable ride. But you know, what other things have you heard from some of the, the feedback from, from, uh, citizens and the customers using uh, these buses? The customers that we hear from, mm -hmm. especially some of the younger generation, yeah. they love the fact that it's environmentally friendly, mm -hmm. right? So this is a big push. This is what we're looking for, making everyone happy. Yeah. Any last thoughts about the overall experience you want to share? No, it's wonderful. Yeah. I have to get my kids on here for a ride. You I haven't should. done that yet. Great. Well, thank you very much thank for that. Thank you so much thank for you. your time. All right. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. All right, so they've let me uh, at the helm here of this electric bus to give it a shot, so I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah, let me make sure I do the right stuff. So, so foot on the brake, and then push down on the emergency. Okay. Yes, pull up. Pull up, sorry. Oh, it is quite something. And we're off. Start turning, start turning. Make a stop, do a left, right, left. Make sure nothing's coming from your left side. Yeah, yeah hold up, hold up. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, they are a little touchy, right? Uh, it takes a little finesse on the brakes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Feel that. Beautiful. Nice acceleration on that one. That was good. 
lots of EVs. I try to drive nice and easy. Yep. My EV too. So, yeah, the acceleration is really nice to be able to feather. And yeah, the brakes just take a little bit of finesse to, to get used to them. So. What we're trying to teach you guys is our technique called feathering the brakes. So we're going to go back in. So now you're going to hit that left signal. And I can feel the regenerative braking kick in a bit, so it's nice. Yeah. A portion of that heat is going to transfer back to the battery. So turn it hard. Yeah. There we go. Ken, are you going to be yeah, applying for a bus driver in the f near future? Well, I might have to, yeah. I'll sign you up on an EV route. It's really nice. It really is easy. Well, folks, anyway, this is my first time driving a bus, so this has been a great experience. And yeah, you got to love EV mode. Uh, full EV buses, they're just so simple to drive. There's no gearing to worry about. A little finesse on the brakes, but the throttle is just really easy to deal with. I'm just slowing down using the regenerative braking. We just have to get a little, once you drive this for a few more minutes, you get the feel of it and all that kind of stuff. So really, really nice thing done. And I can see why the operators like these buses. They are a, uh, a nice thing to have. And I think I got it right that time. All right, good stuff. Excellent. All right, and to wrap up this episode, I'm here with the lovely Ivana Thomas. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. How Pleasure are you? you? Great. So you're the Director of Transit Services for the City of Brampton, did I get that right? That's right. All right, it's a long title. Um, and this is kind of where, you know, now that you, you're going through a POC, we've, we've seen a lot of the, the information about the busing, about how they're being received by both operations and staff and the public, mm -hmm. which is all great stuff. But where do you guys plan on going from here, you know, to, to continue on your, the journey that you guys are doing? Great question, Ken. We love this journey that we're on and there's so much more exciting stuff happening in Brampton. So as you know, we have our first trial with our electric buses. Mm -hmm. We are looking at phase two of that trial, adding about another 10 more buses to that. Mm -hmm. Also dabbing into a little bit of exploring with fuel, um, hydrogen fuel cell buses right. as well mm -hmm. to see how that works. Yeah. We had this experience with electric buses, but now we want to see what does the other side look like as well. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing is also that with the phase two trial, we'll be able to get a lot more data and we'll be able to understand a lot more what it looks like to have a larger fleet of electric buses. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's one thing when you're looking at just a handful, but then scale that up to, I think I heard 450, is that the number? That's right. That's a, that's a large fleet to manage. So what do you guys anticipate in the long term of how, how that management is going to, is it going to be a more simplified management approach because they're all electric, your maintenance is lower, it's easy to operate? What's some of the feedback there? What yeah, well, Another great question, yeah. what we're working on now is our zero emission bus implementation plan. Mm -hmm. As we've heard previously in this episode, we're working with QTRIC, mm -hmm. and they're helping us develop this implementation plan, which will tell us exactly how do we roll out the electric fleet. Yeah. 450 buses, that's a lot of buses. Lot we're of used buses, to yeah. diesel buses, yeah. we're used to diesel hybrid electric, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we need a lot more experience and a lot more knowledge to understand what that rollout works. Yeah. So we're working with QTRIC on that. Once we have that data, then we'll be able to have plans in place for the next couple of years, number of years of how many buses get rolled out every year and what does that look like. Mm -hmm. But the large part of having electric buses, obviously we need funding. Yeah. So we are very fortunate that we closed on a financial loan with the Canada Infrastructure Bank, which would give us $400 million to mm -hmm. purchase up to 450 buses. And this covers the incremental cost of okay. electric buses, yeah. which are higher in cost than diesel buses. Yes. And how would we repay that loan is for the operational savings mm -hmm. that we would have using the electric buses. Mm -hmm. So we just closed with the Fund Canada Infrastructure Bank last year. Great. So we're working with them and this will be a long-term relationship with them over the course of the next 10 to 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. In addition, as you know, we're working on our third facility. Mm -hmm. So in Northeast Brampton, we're going to be constructing a third facility. We have received funding for the building of the facility. And now we're working with our provincial and federal partners on further funding electrification of that building. Good. We are at a point where when you start building a building, it's great to do electrification oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> so is. we have put in some funding applications through the Federal Zero Emission Transit Fund, and we're hopeful to receive some really good news shortly great. on that. Um, and if we think this facility you're in today, Sandwood is large, yeah. that facility is going to be even larger. Yeah, and you know, one question I did fail to ask is how big is this facility here? Do you, have, do you know how big this is? Oh, it's a very big facility. It We've is, had yeah. a number of expansions over yes. the years yeah. as well. Yeah. This has about 60 to 
seventy percent of our fleet, whereas okay. our other facility, Clark, has yeah. about thirty percent. So yeah. it's quite large. Yes. We have a total of fourteen hundred employees. So as mm -hmm. you can imagine, it's quite a large organization. We are one of the largest and fastest growing transit providers in Canada. So we're happy to be on this journey. We can't wait for what that entails. Well, you know, it's all fantastic news and, and you know, the main purpose of this episode was to show viewers what's going on and what can be achievable uh, where you have municipalities that are looking to really seriously reduce their, their climate impact and obviously public busing and public, you know, and, and um, public vehicles that they use is another aspect, but busing is huge and it's great to see the journey that you guys have come from where you're at and where you're going because I think people can take that you know and I would encourage uh, viewers and watchers to go to their local politicians in their towns if they're not looking at electrified busings and start having those conversations because they are a huge part and you know that financial model that you guys have talked about you know it's really tangible nowadays you know it might have been less maybe 10 years ago mm -hmm. exciting to continue to watch the progress for uh, City of Brampton and Brampton Transit in your electrification journey. I'll have to follow up in another year or a couple of years and see how Absolutely. things are going and keep tabs on you guys. But it's exciting and uh, I wish you guys all the best of luck and thank, thank you, you for so hosting much. me today. You and You're your, very your team welcome. have welcome been just, back again. just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right.